Hello everyone, in this video we are going to see various terms that are related to rate analysis. First one is overhead charges. So what are overhead charges? These are indirect or unproductive expenses that are incurred by the contractor. Such expenses are office expenses, taxes, supervision charges etc. See, these are nothing but unproductive expenses that are not related to the actual item of work and they are indirect expenses. They will not be related to the actual item of work. So, those expenses will come under the overhead charges such as office expenses, taxes, supervision charges and they are broadly divided into two categories. First one is indirect or general expenses or general overheads and second one is direct or job overheads. First, we will see indirect or general overheads see these are those expenses that are not specific to any particular job but are fees that the contractor pays on the regular basis see these are not those expenses which are specific to a particular job but it is nothing but a fees that contractor has to pay on a regular basis so it will include salary of office staff such as clerk pn rent of office traveling expenses of staff for the work then telephone base see if you observe it properly these are the those expenses which contractor has to pay on the regular basis remember this word it is it has to be paid paid on the regular basis such as see salary of office staff it has to be paid on the regular basis maybe monthly then rent of office it is also has to be paid monthly so contractor has to pay this on a regular basis and these are the expenses uh, which are the expenses which come under this category office expenses then uh, salaries of clerk and pn rent of office traveling expenses then telephone bills even telephone bills may come every month so these are the those expenses which are come on the regular basis and contractor has to pay it so that are nothing but indirect or general overheads then we have direct or job overheads See, these are unique to a specific project and change from job to job. Then it will include salary of engineers, supervisors, then repair works or repair charges of tools and plants, then insurance premium of workers, interest on investment. So it may vary and it may change from job to job. Salary of engineers, maybe at some big projects, the salary may be different or higher on smaller projects the supervisor may get uh, low salary engineers may get low salary then repair charges maybe tools or plants will be different for a particular project maybe for the construction of dam it may be different for the construction of buildings it may be different so these are nothing but those expenses which may change but they will be specific for a particular job for the for the construction of say for example construction of dam the tools and plants equipments may be uh, fixed then salary of engineers may be for higher project it will be more for lower project it will be less and also on interest interest on investment it may be different for different types of jobs so these are overhead charges then the next term is contractors profit see in the rate analysis at the time of rate analysis if you are finding uh, or if you are doing the rate analysis of any item of work contractor profit is to be taken and it has to be added into final cost and it is generally taken as 10% of the cost of material as well as labor for example for example the total cost of labor plus material is 1 lakh rupees then we will add 10% more that is 1 lakh 10000 it will be so the total cost of that particular item of work will be 1 lakh 10000 because we have to add 10% of as contractors profit so in the rate analysis, we will add contractor's profit. Generally, it is 10%. And if the cement and steel are supplied by the department to the contractor, then profit is not allowed on cement and steel. In many cases, what it, uh, especially in the government projects, what is done, generally the cement and steel are supplied by the department, maybe PWD department or any other department. For example, say PWD department. So, PWD department will supply cement and steel to the contractor then contractor will not add profit because the material is supplied by this department so 
on the steel and cement there will not be any profit to the contractor so contractor's profit is generally taken as 10 percent of the cost of material as well as labors then the next term is water charges for preparing the rate analysis of pcc work rcc work plastering work then brick work an extra item or extra cost such as 1.5 percent of cost of materials and labors is added as water charges generally how much percent is added generally 1.5 percent extra cost is added and it is 1.5 percent of what 1.5 percent of cost of materials and labors and that charge is nothing but water charges because we need water for different works such as pcc work for rcc work for mixing the concrete then for uh, doing the curing process so water will be needed at many in the many items of works so it is generally taken as 1.5 percent of cost of materials and labors in the time in at the time of preparing the rate analysis so contractor will either include the water charges of 1.5 percent in the total amount at the end of bill or he will calculate the volume of water which is required and then it will multiply it with the rate while calculating the cost of materials there are two methods one one possibility is that what he will do he will directly add 1.5 percent of total amount that is amount cost of material and labor or what he will do he will calculate actual volume of water which is required for particular item of work and then he will multiply that volume of work volume of water by the rate of water so that he can get the how much amount is needed for the water so this was water charges then next terms are lead and lift first we will see what is lead and then we will go for lift so what is lead lead is the horizontal distance between the point of excavation and the point of disposal of earthwork for example there is a excavation going on at some site then that excavated material which is which we get after the excavation so it has to be disposed at some place so at what place you are disposing it how much horizontal distance that material will cover that is nothing but the lead lead is what so lead will be the horizontal distance from the point of excavation at what point you are excavating the material and it has to be disposed at some other place so to the point of disposal of earthwork so it is the horizontal distance and generally it is measured in terms of 50 meter distance generally it is taken as 50 meter see there is another term or another concept as a standard lead standard lead is taken as 30 meter but only if you are talking about only the lead so it is measured in terms of 50 meter distance and standard lead is taken as 30 meter we will see what is standard lead so lead is nothing but the horizontal distance which is uh, the distance between the point of excavation and the point of disposal of material now let's see what is standard lead see standard lead is defined as the horizontal distance up to which a contractor will haul the excavated material and it is included in the rate of excavation means it is contractor's responsibility that he should haul the material he should dispose the material up to a distance of 30 meter and if it is greater than 30 meter or if it is more than 30 meter then extra charges has to be added in the contractor's uh, calculated value or calculated charges or calculated amount so standard lead is what what is standard lead standard lead is defined as horizontal distance up to which the contractor will haul the excavated material means it's contractor's responsibility to dispose of that material up to that distance and what is that distance it is generally taken as 30 meter and it is called a standard or normal lead then we have extra lead so if the material which is excavated has to be disposed at place which is more than 30 meter away from the place of excavation then what will happen obviously the handling charges will be more then in that case handling charges are to be paid to the contractor for the additional lead of every 30 meter for example the lead distance that is the horizontal distance between the point of excavation and point of disposal is say 90 meter but contractor the standard lead is only 30 meter means contractor has to take that material 60 meter extra so for that 
every 30 30 meter contractor has to be paid and in our case for example it is 90 meter so for extra 60 meter we have to pay the contractor are you getting or not see extra lead is that if the material is excavated at a place and it is has it has to be disposed more than 30 meter away from the place of excavation then handling charges are paid to the contractor for every extra 30 meter for every 30 meter lead and this are added in the final cost that is nothing but the extra lead now let's see what is lift lift is nothing but the vertical distance for the material which is excavated between the point of excavation and the point of disposal for example if you are excavating a material and it has to be disposed vertically for example the depth of excavation is 2 meter so to remove that material and to take it over the ground you will have to cover the material has to cover the vertical distance of 2 meter so that is nothing but lift so generally standard lift is taken as 1.5 meter remember this so lift is what lift is the vertical distance for the material to be excavated and it will be the distance between the point of excavation and the point of disposal that is nothing but lift so lead and lift concept is clear so this was the video about various terms that are related to the rate analysis thank you